All right, so let's have a look at the section B of the recent half-term assessment. So we're going to start off looking at some energy. So we've got a parcel dropped onto a delivery chute, and the belt is moving at 1.7 meters per second. Uh, the parcel starts at zero, and then essentially over 0.82 seconds gains enough speed to just sit on it and travel at 1.7 meters per second. Calculate the <coughs> change in kinetic energy. So first of all, change is always final minus the initial. So it's going to be half mass, essentially the change in the square of the velocities. Um, but the initial velocity is zero, so we can cancel that. So it's just going to be half times 15 times 1.7 squared. So let's calculate that. Uh, that's 21.675 yada yada. So it's 22 joules of kinetic energy there. <clears throat> okay, so that's the change in kinetic energy. So to cause that change in kinetic energy, you've got a force applied uh, for a period of time. And we want to calculate the distance um, between it's where it starts and where it reaches this one. So the general expression we've got here is essentially this one like this. That's because there's no change in GPE because it's horizontal. It starts with kinetic energy of zero and there's no like work done against friction or anything like that. So that essentially we know that work done is equal to 21.675. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, work done is also equal to force times distance. So distance is going to be the work divided by the force. So it's going to be 21.675 divided by a force 31. Uh, which comes out as 0 0.70 meters there. So making sure you're using the unrounded value on the top line here, not the rounded one we had there. And that will get you the distance. Okay. Okay, so in this one we've got the parcel now. Instead of going along the flat, it's going up an incline. And you want to work out the rate at which work is done on the parcel. So essentially what we need to do to work out is the energy transferred to the object per second. Um, so we know it's going by 1.7 meters per second in along the incline. But what we're going to be interested in is its vertical velocity because that would dictate the GP change. So that's going to be 1.7 sine 30, so let's calculate that first. It's not 30 at all, it's like it's 18. What utter rubbish. Uh, which is 0 0.525. So essentially what that tells you is it goes up by 0.525 meters every second so this is now like that multiple choice question so the work done per second or the rate of work done is going to be equal to the gpe per second which is going to be equal to the mass times gravitation times the height increase per second so 15 and it's 9.81 times by 0.525, blah, blah, blah. So that's times that, times 15 times 9.81, which is 77 watts, because it's joules per second, which is the same as the unit of power or a watt there. Okay. So in this question, what we've got is we've got a, um, this is actually quite a classic experiment uh, you can use to measure the speed of bullets or show conservation momentum. It's called a ballistic pendulum. So essentially what you do is you shoot a bullet or a pellet into a block and you see how high 
the block goes and use that height to determine uh, things like the velocity of this and demonstrate conservation of momentum. So what I want to do is determine the speed of the pellet, um, but the key thing here is that the collision between the bullet and the block is not elastic, so we can't simply go how much GP is there at the end, it must have that much kinetic energy to start with, it's not that straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the kinetic energy of the block and bullet combined in order to reach this position. So. So the kinetic energy of the combined object must be equal to the final GP of the object, because essentially that's what's going to happen as the block starts moving when it gets hit by the bullet, it's going to move up and transfer kinetic energy into GP. So that's going to be um, MGH, the final height. So it's a combined mass of naught point. 4588, because remember we need it in kilograms, times 9.81 times by 0 0.63. So let's calculate that first. So 0 0.588 times 9.81 times 0 0.63, which is 2.83 uh, joules. That's how much kinetic energy the block has with a bullet embedded in it before it goes up to the final position. But if we're going to uh, deal with a collision, we're going to need to apply conservation momentum. So what we actually need to do is work out what the momentum of the combined object is. <coughs> so a useful way is expressing kinetic energy in terms of momentum. So that's half mv squared. It's 1 over 2 m mv squared, so that's momentum squared over 2m. So we can apply that and work out that the final momentum is going to be the kinetic energy, so 2.83 times 2 times 0.588 square root, which is like 1.61303 newton seconds. So that means the initial momentum must have been that value as well, because applying conservation of momentum there. Um, so the initial velocity is going to be initial momentum divided by mass. So that's the 1.61 divided by 0 0.0088, because uh, that's the mass of the bullet which gives you 183.29. So it's going to be 1.8 times 10 to the 2 meters per second there. That would be your velocity of the bullet when it strikes, which we calculated from the height the ballistic pendulum rises. Okay. So let's, I'm just going to increase this a bit so I can write a bit more clearly. So the wooden block is replaced by a steel block of the same mass. Experiment is repeated, uh, but the bullet rebounds after striking the block. Um, so let's sort of sketch what this looks like. So this is your block, and you've got your bullet coming along with momentum. Let's just call it MV. So if this is your wooden block. What happens is the momentum of the bullet goes from mv to zero because it becomes like embedded in it. So, so change in momentum of the object is going to be the final. So like zero minus mv. So it's minus mv there. That's your change in momentum with a wood block. So let's do the same thing with a steel block. And let's say, the sake of argument, it bounces back at the like, same momentum. This is be the, the best case scenario. So in this case, the change in momentum is going to be minus 2 mv. There, which means the momentum of the bullet and the block, sorry, the momentum of the block will be plus 2 mv. So in this scenario, 
the block would have to go off with a total momentum of mv, whereas in this scenario it would have to go off with a total momentum of 2mv, because the total momentum before must be equal to the total momentum after. So let's look at how we can explain how that links to the height. Um, so let's first look at the bullet. So So remember, we're comparing this to if it becomes embedded, uh, it experiences a, a greater change in momentum. Just remember, the momentum is a vector, so the direction is important, so it's actually experienced a greater change in momentum. Therefore, the block experiences a greater change in momentum. Sorry, this is a bit untidy. And we can express that because of Newton's third law. So if the bullet experiences a certain change in momentum, the block must experience an equal and opposite change in momentum. Okay, so we've got at the moment the block has a greater change in momentum, which means it starts higher kinetic energy. Now, during the lift, kinetic energy is transferred to GPE, which means essentially if you give it more kinetic energy to start with, it's going to move to a, a higher uh, final height. So those are the stages to go through. First, what is the change in momentum of the bullet? Therefore, what is the change in momentum of the block? Therefore, what happens to the kinetic energy? Therefore, what happens to the final GP? So that tells us about the final height. So that's the logical stages to go through there. Okay, so you're looking at the last question. Um, so we've got a car accelerated from rest to a speed of 56 meters per second on a horizontal track before it ascends a steep part and it becomes stationary at C, the highest point. Total mass of the car and passengers is 83 uh, 100 kilograms. First, it wants to calculate the angle, uh, sorry, calculate the component of weight acting along or parallel to the slope when it's at position B. So let's uh, just sketch a quick diagram of what that looks like. So there's your slope. There's your object, and it would have a weight force acting vertically downwards, because they always are. And what it's asking us to calculate is the component of weight parallel to the slope. So let's have a look at, let's sort of load that up in terms of vectors. So there's your weight force, essentially. Then we're going to resolve it into two components. And this angle in here is going to be 25 degrees. And it's asking us to calculate that one, which would be W sine 25, which is 8300 times 9.81 times sine 25. So let's calculate that. which is going to be 3.4 times 10 to the 5 newtons there. And if it asked you for the component perpendicular, which would be this side, that would just be W cosine 25. Um, you can prove this by looking at similar triangles and stuff, but if you're not wanting to do that, you can just remember the parallel component will be the sine of your slope angle and the perpendicular will be the cosine. Up to you. All right, so then this next bit, calculate the kinetic energy of the passengers and car traveling at 56 meters per second. Uh, so kinetic energy is half mv squared. Remember to show your equation before substituting. Half times 8300 is 56 squared. When you do that, it gives you um, 
1.3 times 10 to the 7 joules of energy there. So we want to calculate the maximum height in the next question. So essentially at maximum height, all of the initial kinetic energy would have been transferred into uh, GP. So we know that the final height is going to be calculated from this. So Final height is going to be 1.3, blah, blah, blah. We always in the unrounded version here. Divided by 8300 times 9.81. Divided by 9.81. to 159.83. So 1.6 times 10 to the 2 meters there would be your maximum possible height you could reach if there was no air resistance or anything. So linking on to that, explain why you wouldn't reach that height. Uh, so as I was just saying, there's always going to be uh, work done against uh, friction or air resistance. So what does that mean? Well, initially we had uh, kinetic energy going to GP, but now what we've got is kinetic energy into GP plus work done against friction. So what that's going to mean is that the amount of GP is going to be reduced, which is why you are not reaching the maximum heights. So the two points here, first is explaining what's different so you're doing work and then explaining that that causes you a small amount of gp so a smaller height okay um so the car reaches a point which is a height of 140 calculate the speed that car would reach when it descends to its original height from the ground if 80 percent seven percent of its energy is converted so let's calculate its initial GP, so it'll be M G H so it's 8300 times 9.81 times 140 uh, equals 9.81 times 1.13 there you go, there you go. Seven. So the final kinetic energy is not going to be equal to that. It's going to be equal to 87% of that one. The final kinetic energy is going to be equal to 9.9 times 10 to the 6 joules. So final is going to be equal to Kinetic energy times 2 divided by mass. So let's do that. So it times by 2 divided by 8300 square root. And that gives us 48.8 blah, 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 blah. So that's going to be 49 meters per second there. Um, so that's the approach there. Calculate how much GP it is. How much kinetic energy you're going to get from that and then calculate the velocity, and that completes this paper.